Matthew 12, 36 is where we're at. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. And then we'll read verse 37 too. This eternal uh, judgment. And we were talking about eternal judgment, what it meant. And we talked about judgment according to your works. Now we're talking about judgment according to our own words, being part of our works. Our works are outside lifestyle deeds. You shall know the tree by what? The fruit it bears. By the fruit that it bears. You always know a tree by the fruit that it bears. What's a tree? The tree represents a human being, a person, an individual person. So that individual person has what you call fruits, just like a natural tree has fruits. Uh, 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 an apple tree grows what kind of fruit? Apples. An orange tree grows what kind of fruit? Apples. A lemon tree grows what kind of fruit? Lemons. Is there such thing as a lemon tree? Yes. Yeah. A potato tree grows what kind of fruit? <laughs> See, I got y'all. Make sure y'all pay attention. All right, but it, you will know a tree by the fruit it bears. An apple tree is not going to grow potatoes, is it? It's not going to be stupid looking fruit on an apple tree. It's going to be apple fruit. So you get people in the world who are trees. We are trees. If you are a child of God, you're going to bring forth fruits of God's spirit. The Bible says God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says God is what? A spirit. spirit. If God is a spirit, then your fruits should be spiritual. So we should have the fruits of the spirit, which is God's spirit. You can read about that over in Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. So you can read that later on about the fruits of the spirit. One of those fruits is love. God has a fruit called love. That he gives to everyone that is begotten of him. Everyone that is begotten. Begotten means what? Being born, birth, brought forth. We are brought forth or birthed by God in our second birth. You have a natural birth, which is the birth of, from your mother. All right? The next birth is the birth from God that comes down from heaven. Born again. The second time. Born again. You need a born-again experience to be considered a fruit-bearing Christian. So we have to bring forth God's fruits. Joy. You have to have joy in your life. You have to have peace. Peace is part of the fruits of the Spirit. So you should know a tree by the fruit it bears. As the devil, part of God's fruits of, that should be coming out of your tree in your mouth when you speak. All right, so your fruits are your lifestyle deeds. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. We're going to talk about your own words being a part of your works or your fruits or your outward lifestyle deeds. I'm going to ask Daryl to read verse 36 for me, please, 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account give account there there are in the day of judgment what day are you going to give an account for the day, of judgment. day of judgment now let's figure out what the word account means the word account means a statement it means an explanation it means a report you have to give a report when in the day of judgment for what it says, but I say unto you, it's Jesus Christ speaking, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Now, I look at that sometimes and say, oh, man, I wish I didn't have to do that. Because of so many things I've said that it's been idle. So you say, what does idle mean? Idle means... uh groundless it doesn't have anything to do with anything or worthless every worthless word every groundless word every useless word every inactive word every meaningless word really every foolish word that comes out of your mouth every foolish word 
I got a backup for foolishness and things like that in um, Proverbs 24, 9. Let's go over there to a backup. We're coming right back. Daryl, that'll be your backup. That's Proverbs chapter 24, verse 9. Let's take a peek at that as far as foolishness is concerned. What did you say, Daddy? Uh, foolishness. Um, uh, Proverbs 24, 9. Daryl, it's your backup. Read. The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner. The scorner is a abomination to men. Amen. The thought of foolishness. What is it? Abomination. No. Nope. Sin. Aren't you looking at that? Let's read it again. The thought of foolishness is blank. Sin. Sin. One guy asked me one time, and I believe I was asking the person this before before I knew anything about the Bible. I said, it's a bad thought, sin. If I just think, have bad thoughts or evil thoughts, is that a sin? He said, no, no, no. But I thought I had read that in the Bible one time. Long time ago. And I was in waiting to go to court and things like that. I was in the county jail in the Queensgate, Cincinnati. And I had Sat, man, and I was wondering if a bad thought was a sin. So I went to some of the Bible thumpers that were frequent the county jail every once in a while. And I asked them, was it an evil thought sin? But the thought of foolishness, was that right? The thought of foolishness mm -hmm. is sin. Just to think about stupid stuff. To get involved in things that's stupid in your mind is a sin. The very thought to think about something stupid and silly, ignorant, is a sin. But now we have watered down uh, God in the very day that we live here. We water him down like, oh, ain't nothing wrong with that anymore. It's cool now to be stupid and silly and think evil. Why? Because everybody does. And if everybody does it, the majority must be right. And then God must be wrong. He cool now. God is cool. He don't be doing nothing no more. He, he, he lay back. God is asleep. He don't even know what's going on. He can't see us. Just shut your door. He didn't see nothing. Shut the curtain. Pull the curtains too. God ain't paying attention. He didn't even know anymore. See, that's the kind of preachers we got today. No preacher really is preaching the truth today in the days we're living in. No, who, who you know talk about eternal judgment? Nobody. Nobody talk about that stuff. Ain't nobody talking about repentance in the church today. Nobody telling nobody to turn from their sins. Why? Because it, the world's so full of sin, it, it just figure out another gospel or something. Because everybody's sinning. Hey, everybody's sinning. The whole world. So don't even preach that no more. Get that, push that out of the country. And don't even preach it no more. The only person preaching that is Jesus. He's don't even live anymore. So they say. That's what they say. He died and went to heaven. That's what people think. God believe, ask anybody. They, they, he died in the cross. Yeah, he's in heaven now. They don't even think about that. He resurrected. Just passed that all up. We just had the teaching on the uh, resurrection of the dead, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus resurrected from the dead. Nobody even think about that. Well, he ain't here. Yeah, he is. He be here. He be in places he show up. But the devil can be here. The devil is here. Everybody tell you about the devil. The first thing people person tell you is the devil's alive. Well, how do you know? Is he down in there? No, he here. The devil, he be everywhere. Well, how come Jesus ain't everywhere? Jesus ain't everywhere? Nope. He died on the cross. He floated away to heaven. See, people, nobody's even thinking about this stuff. Nobody thinks that Jesus cares about your sins. We sin freely, willfully. We do what we want to do when we want to. Why? Because we know that we got needs. We'll go and just do what we want to. So like, shoot, I got a pair of knees. Shoot, I can do, I'll do what I want. This girl that made me mad. That man that said something to me, man, you say something else. And then you go in your mind like, shoot, I got knees. So I'm cool. 
Now, I can get down on them later on tonight. And just say, Lord, just forgive me for that, what I did. You know? And God is good enough. He, he, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins as it cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But I know people that did willful sins. They did it willfully. It's hard to distinguish what's willful and what's not. It's hard to distinguish because we got so many things that we carry in our minds, our brain. We got so much sin that ain't been swept up. Just go sweep a house real good. Go clean it up. Turn the vacuum cleaner on extra high. And go back in one little room like this room right here. And I guarantee you, if you bring some scientists in with microscopes and things like that, you're going to find something that ain't come up. You see? You find it, and you'll be guilty. If, they find, if I find one crumb, I'm going to uh, lock you up. You see? One crumb. And they find thousands of crumbs in this little crap. Thousands of them. With your super extra powerful uh, uh, vacuum cleaner. Still find it. The Bible said the, the best soap anybody on planet Earth could ever use could never wash away your sin. Never. It could never get you clean. The best you could do on your arm is as filthy as a, a, a woman's rag. You see? Filthy. That's the best you could do. All your righteousness is filthy rags, the Bible said. Best you can do. But what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Well, how in the world is the blood of Jesus going to cleanse this man over here's life? How are you going to cleanse his life? How are you going to cleanse my life? How? What the blood of Jesus going to do? Oh, you can plead the blood of Jesus all you want. You don't understand the power of it. You ain't going to get nothing. There ain't nobody preached it to you. How can you get faith to believe in the power of Jesus Christ if ain't nobody preaching it to you? Ain't nobody told you? You say, oh, the blood of Jesus. You'd be like, what does it mean? They'd be like, oh, man, you asked me real. Now that, let me look on Wikipedia. Hey, fast. Let's see. You see? <laughs> and then they charge people now. You go in there, you ever try to look up a dictionary? Uh, the word? They say, give us a few dollars because we need some help. So you need a teaching on the blood of Jesus Christ. Everybody do. Every Christian should know about the blood of Jesus. Saved by the blood. If you saved by the blood, you ought to be able to tell somebody all about the blood of Jesus. You're supposed to know about the blood sacrifices from a long time ago in the Old Testament. You need to know all about that. There's too many people just don't understand the power of the blood of Jesus. They don't understand the significance of it. They don't understand the, the design of God to planet Earth about the blood of Jesus Christ. They don't understand that. And if you don't understand that, how can you plead it? You can't make a plea if you don't understand. The blood of Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. But we go all the way back to what I was talking about, about being foolish and having foolish thoughts and your idle words. And being so free to just sin and whatever you want to. We say anything we want to say and think we'll just go on back and talk to the Lord because we got our knees to get on. Listen, let's look at this in verse 36 again. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. But I say unto you, I'm talking to you, Jesus said, that every idle word, every foolish word that men shall speak, they shall give account. They're going to give a statement or explanation or report. There are when in the day of judgment. You got to explain yourself. I always preach that. That you got to explain yourself on the day of judgment. You have to. Of every evil thing that you ever did, whether you're going to heaven or whether you're going to hell, it don't matter. You still going to tell God all your sins. Everything, every evil, foolish thing that you ever did, you got to explain that to him. Then you're going to be so ashamed. Even if you get into that, you still got to tell him. You're going to be ashamed because you got, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We got to see all the good and the bad we ever did in our life. <coughs> when, we live, when we live in this body, you got to see it all. We're going to show it all to you one more time. Let me show you this. And all the stuff that he disapproved of that you did, he, you're going to see all that. You're going to stand. You're going to, oh, man. Oh, man. You're going to see it. Oh, all the bad stuff. I can't, it's some things that I just hope, I just, I don't want to see it. 
Come on, see.